Hello and welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. On the show today, we take a look at India's EV landscape. According to a World Economic Forum report, India has the world's largest fleet of two and three wheelers, and its transition to electric vehicles requires a financing of $285 billion. We're talking about 100% electrification in India. Government policies such as faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles of fame have supported the adoption of EVs and uh, sales have been rising steadily over the past few years. About 7.3 lakh vehicles have been incentivized under FAME 2. In Santev's worth, over 3,000 crores have been rolled out and 6,800 crores of FAME outlay remains till March 2024. The question that we're asking today, can India's EV ecosystem continue without subsidies? And what is the average loss that EV companies are making per vehicle? To take this forward, I'm now joined by Akash Gupta, the CEO and co-founder of Zip Electric, Randeer Singh of Niti Aayog, Jasmeet Khurana of the World Economic Forum, and GR Arun Kumar, the Chief Financial Officer at Ola. Randeer Singh, if I could ask you now, we have been hearing a lot of debates on subsidies, that EV subsidies cannot continue forever, even within government circles, there is a review on what to do after 2024. Uh, at the Niti Aayog, what is the view that is now developing on continuing EVs, uh, su continuing subsidies post uh, March 2024? See, Parikshit, uh, you know, uh, first of all, we need to understand why subsidies were at the first place needed. So, EV is a sunrise sector and it needs to actually break the long drawn IC vehicle convincibility from the consumer. So, you know, the consumers are already attuned to the IC vehicles. Now, if we have to shift them to a newer technology, which is not as much prevalent, that's where the nudge is required, initial nudge is required, and that's where the demand incentive, the first launch was of the demand incentive, FAME 2 incentives were done. Once the FAME 2 incentives were done, then we learned last year by that time what are the requirements for this not to be picking up. So then we remodeled the FAME 2. And now it has picked up like anything. In fact, since last year till now, around 10x sales has increased. And the main impact we see on the biggest market, that is the two-wheelers, which is 76% of our market. Now, mm. you know, from the adoption, mm. from the demand side, that is the putting the parity at the capex level, upfront cost. The shift has also happening mm. towards mm. the manufacturing side. And that is where the ACC PLI, Advanced mm. Chemistry Cell PLI, that, which targets the battery part, that is overall part, if we see the mm. vehicle is 100, then in vehicle, for the electric vehicle, 40 rupees goes with the battery. And that is where the manufacturing is required. Our total mm. dependence right now on the import from the lithium-ion battery side. So that is where the ACC, mm. bet, ACC PLI mm. targets the manufacturing, indigenization. The next part is the, what about the rest of the parts of the EV? Mm. That is where the auto PLI kicks in. Mm. So now the entire vehicle is covered mm. from the you know the manufacturing side itself. So that the entire vehicle's cost in itself mm. when it is indigenized will go lower. So uh, you know in the first mm. part when the incentives were given, the customers are already sensitized, market is developed, market is nudged. Now it has reached to a stage wherein if the right vehicle at the right price is available, which will be done through this, these two panels, then definitely the market is going to pick up and it will no longer need the support, the fiscal support at all. Anyways, there are two levels of support was there. The right. federal level, we have the fame policy, but mm. states have also come out with their individual policies. 20, more than 20 states have come out with their individual policies. Mm. And in addition to the fiscal, there are non-fiscal mm. incentives also. So, you know, in terms of whether the subsidy part for the demand side is required or not, after the manufacturing cost going down with the PLIs and also the manufacturing, uh, you know, the incentives mm -hmm. at the state levels are also there. These coming together will lower mm -hmm. the EV price lesser than the IC counterparts. So no longer it is actually uh, needed. The, uh, this right. is what the factfulness is. Right, and okay. anyway, I, I would also like to ask you one more quick question. Uh, one more quick question. As far as the current outlay goes, we believe that 3,800 crores has been used to incentivize electric chargers in the country, electric vehicles in the country. 
by when could this remaining outlay of approximately 6,000 crores be exhausted? So, you know, the major chunk of the outlay goes towards the buses. And the world's biggest tender has just now completed. And another tender of 5,000 plus buses has also been uh, released. And the bids are being asked. You know, these things are going to be materialized from next year onwards. That is when the major chunk will go. Mm -hmm. So the tenders are already successful. It has already been awarded under the FAME 2. Even the charges has already been allocated. Now we will see that money getting actually expensed next year onwards. That big chunk will go. Nevertheless, in terms of the two-wheelers, already the pickup is very, very high. In fact, almost 40 to 50 percent has already been exhausted. And, you know, uh, the target of one million vehicles, I'm, I'm pretty sure that under the same two, this will be, uh, this should take up by the end of uh, 2023. You know, uh, and also the buses and other sectors will also pick up. So that is when the whole expense, Hmm. It is targeted towards uh, you know the March 2024. Uh, much before that, it should be completed. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Randeer Singh, for joining us with that important perspective. Now, let me take this uh, to Arun Kumar of Ola, Akash Gupta of Zip Electric and Jasmeet Kurana. Uh, Arun Kumar, Ola has now started seeing a pickup in its sales over the last uh, uh, last few months. Uh, the Vahan registrations show. 16,400 vehicles registered approximately in the month of November. Uh, Ola claims to have sold about 20,000 electric vehicles in the month of November. Could you do without the FAME subsidy? Yeah, I think, um, see, the, uh, the first uh, big trend that all of us are looking at is that um, truly an inflection point has come in. And uh, that's a real big picture here. And we've always been maintaining that this year is going to be the year when uh, there's going to be a huge inflection. And if you look at the top 15 cities in this country, you're already at about 15, 20% in terms of uh, EV adoption. And the uh, country average is about less than 5%. And we see this uh, huge uh, inflection coming very, very soon. Now, in terms of uh, sales of the uh, EV vehicle, now, fame or uh, no fame subsidy is a, is a different issue, but uh, the Indian customers, I think, have made a very, very clear choice, uh, unreversible choice towards electric. And now what is required is really the right quality of products with the right safety and at the right price points. So which is why, um, just like other OEM, we had announced a very interesting product, which is S1 Air, which is coming up at an 80,000 rupees price range in March which is bang in the middle of 70% uh, of uh, the two-wheeler scooter market in terms of pricing. So quality products like that with uh, other really good OEMs coming up with their products is what will drive the conversion. Now, as far as cost is concerned, and uh, your question linking it to fame, um, you see, where the industry is working, the industry is constantly evolving, right? What do we do? What do other good OEMs do in the sector? is that they work on their technology, they work on scale. And a company like ours, as you're aware, is uh, backward integrating into cell manufacture as well. And uh, we are the sort of the biggest uh, awardees of the PLI ACC scheme uh, by the government of India, which should be very, very thankful to. And uh, these steps followed by continuous value engineering, uh, which is a game in any product. And uh, the auto industry is very well known for that in the last three decades though EV is a slightly different flavor, the technology has a different flavor here in terms of electronics, in terms of the motor train, and in terms of the battery pack itself versus a typical ICE engine, all of us are working towards our own cost efficiency. So we believe, as uh, the other gentleman rightly put, come 2024, the ICE age would have ended, the EV adoption is true. There will be many products, including in motorcycles, which don't have products today, and uh, companies like ourselves would have figured out the right cost structures to do business in a very profitable manner. And, and we'll probably be thanking the government of India for the strong uh, foundations that they've laid. And now the responsibility shifts to uh, companies and technology to deliver. So customers will continue buying. Yes, incentives cannot be there in the long run. And uh, we will absolutely get there when, uh, you know, the fame uh, dies its natural death in a couple of years or uh, uh, five, six quarters from now.
I hope that answered your question. Okay. All right. So you're saying that you will be ready with the right cost structure once the FAME subsidies come to an end in March 2024. Uh, Arun, if I may also ask you, have you seen a slowdown in FAME disbursements? We're hearing that there is greater scrutiny now at the level of the DHI and disbursal of subsidies is taking time, sometimes even two months. Well, I think the government should do whatever work it has to do for uh, clearing claims. That's, that's a very normal process. And uh, if, uh, unfortunately, a, a few players were under scrutiny and uh, so be it. So we are quite comfortable with the current process that the government has adopted. And, uh, you know, I think the, the larger picture is what is important from a government point of view, because if you do a global comparison today uh, with the PLI manufacturing, PLI ACC, and the customer subsidy fame, uh, there's no better place than India for an EV revolution. And uh, that's exactly what we are uh, seeing. At the end of Ice Age, we are uh, absolutely... Uh, right. ...that this is here to stay. Right. Uh, let me uh, get in Akash Gupta of Zip Electric. Akash, you have been working with many EV manufacturers in the country, uh, like Hero Electric as well. Give us a sense of uh, the cost right now, the mathematics of it all. Many of the electric vehicle manufacturers, many of the startups are yet to break even. From your sense, what is the kind of loss per vehicle that EV companies, EV startups are making right now, Akash? Sure, Parikh, thanks. thanks for having me. See, I think uh, my point is that an EV revolution has just begun. We've started seeing that happen over the last, uh, I would say, 12 months, when all of these players have started supplying larger numbers. It's like uh, the, the seed was sown, uh, obviously, by the government uh, with, with fame incentive and subsidies, and that seed has now started seeing a sapling to come out. Now, here, what we are trying to say is that while the sapling starts growing and it now starts throwing some flowers, we are trying to pluck them, right? I think I'd be a little wary of doing that so early, uh, which is about 2023 or 24. I would say that let it grow into a little largest tree, right? Because, because businesses are very few. I think while we have deployed 10,000 EVs in the market, but that's a small number, right? We are talking about 15 million two-wheelers which get sold in our country every year. We are talking about China, which is the largest EV you know, user today. They have about 25% of their overall sales now, which is electric, and still their incentives are continued. They are, they are changed. They are tweaked in a certain way. They are not demand-led incentives, but possibly usage-led led incentives. And I think those are things that government should think and come out. It's not to kind of kill the plant today, but, but kind of continue to see uh, it because we are fighting versus oil, we are fighting versus pollution, we are fighting versus climate change. And hence, businesses like ours will right. definitely so, Akash, thrive more. in your perspective... Please. Right. Akash, in your perspective, till when do we need subsidies? I would say till the time we don't at least hit 20% of the overall sales to go electric. That's a fair assumption. While some of the governments have done it to about 50%. Maybe if we hit a 20-25%, I think that should be a decent number. And if we achieve that by, you know, uh, 24, then, then so be it. All right. So at least till we achieve 20% of electric vehicle sales and subsidies should continue till then. Uh, Jasmeet Khurana, uh, you've come out with an exhaustive report on India's EV ecosystem. Yes, there is impressive growth. If you look at the numbers right now, almost 181% growth in electric vehicle registration in India over 2021. Uh, but when it comes to 100% electrification, can India's EV story continue without subsidies? Right. So I think the subsidy point has already been touched upon. I think uh, we can see subsidies continuing at least till 2024. And I would assume, you know, there would be a requirement for subsidies uh, to continue beyond 2024 as well, as, you know, my colleague was uh, saying uh, that other markets as well will have subsidies and, you know, India will need to uh, be at par with, with the other markets in that sense. So what we are saying uh, as part of this report is that you know, there are 250 million uh, two-wheelers, uh, mostly combustion engine vehicles on the road today. And if we really need to, you know, decarbonize all of that and uh, move towards electric, uh, we need to start first to, you know, get 200% electrification of new sales and, you know, 
then the stock turnover takes uh, takes place so for that to happen we need to move you know fast and we need to be ambitious so in that way uh, incentives need to continue whether it's capital subsidy or you know other forms of subsidy including on manufacturing uh, and you know there are india has one of the highest uh, subsidies like uh, my colleague from ola was also mentioning we have the uh, fame subsidy uh, we have you know lower gst for electric two wheelers which is 5% as compared to 18% the PLI on you know vehicle manufacturing on component manufacturing on battery manufacturing so there are lots of incentives and you know one can't complain today about incentives and you know states also have their own incentives so we can't complain about incentives today they are in if anything they are in excess of what might be you know the situation in other countries uh, but we can't also take them away uh, in one go right so there needs to be a road map uh, of how these incentives will play out so that corporates can make their investment decisions accordingly i think the uncertainty is what uh, the problem would be but if we can get a longer term road map of how these incentives would be phased out i think that is what the industry would welcome hmm. all right that's an important point that if you even want to end subsidies or restructure them in some way or the other do give a road map to the industry because uncertainty is not good for business we're going to take a short break but we'll request all our guests to stay with us we'll be right back on this important discussion